Hey everybody, welcome to Fantasy R&R. This is your host Ryan. And I'm Rob. And we're going to be talking some fantasy baseball and football today. This is Fantasy with Rob and Ryan. Fantasy R&R. We're going to start off with some baseball news. Me and Rob have been looking over a lot of the players that are on waiver wires lately as we scramble to get our teams back in order. Uh, we're a little bit through the season now. I've been seeing a lot of fun games at Fenway. We had the Reds in town. And I think the next homestand, we're going to be doing the Yankees. So there's going to be a lot to talk about when we see some of those players go. Rob, you got a couple of guys that uh, you wanted to bring up. I got a couple of guys I want to bring up. I'm going to go ahead and let you start here with just some of the stuff you've been seeing, who you're adding on your team, and if you see any upward or downward trends with some of these players. Yeah, um, I'm kind of going to review a good bit of players I've already talked about. But again, they're so under-rostered, it's like a now or never. I believe these guys that I'm talking about that are all pretty much like 20, 30 percent owned, I think will be closer to 80 here in just even about a month. Number one, another Tampa Ray, Jose Siri. You have to go get this guy. Elite speed, power. He's batting ninth right now, but the lineup is so great. Everybody's protected. It doesn't matter. I do believe it is potentially thought provoking. I mean, this guy right now, in just over 100 at-bats, I think it's like 106 at-bats, has 10 home runs and 5 stolen bases with like an 880 OPS. Strikes out a lot, yes, but this guy has, and I think I had said it once before, like a poor man's Acuna written all over it. 99th percentile speed, this guy is very, very good. And again, I do believe there's potential for him to move up. Yandy Diaz, I think, is a better hitter in the three hole, and then it's potentially having Siri, Franco, Yandi and whoever else Tampa Bay has on their roster behind them. I think that would be absolutely elite. Get Jose Siri now. Yeah, it's very interesting to now that I look over my team, how I kind of parted ways with a lot of um, the platoon rays. We were talking about that, how difficult it is to kind of assess where these guys are going to be at in the lineups uh, from week to week and then whether or not they're sitting against lefties and pretty much everybody on the rays is doing good. So you have these guys in that slot, you know, the leadoff slot or the ninth slot, and they, have, they all could possess a little bit of value. For me, the biggest value on the rays this year has, has not been the hitting, though. It's their pitching staff has been absolutely fucking mm -hmm. insane. And I'm just curious. I right. just want to hear your take on this. Like, the for the rest of the season, do you see this just being the way it is? Or should guys start selling high on their Tampa pitchers to get some real talent around the league? Or do you think to yourself, it's like, wow, ride this baby all season long. It's not stopping. No. I think they're owning real talent. I would not... I, at this point, you have to have a piece of the Rays offense, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, sure, they're sitting maybe once, maybe twice a week, I mean, once more realistically, but I mean, this lineup, it doesn't matter who they have. They're just scoring a lot of runs, and uh, yeah, you want, you, want a, 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 you want something from the Rays. I mean, again, everybody's kind of ownable. There's not even... <laughs> I think Harold Ramirez is somebody who we talk about that we're like kind of down on. He still has what, like 10 home runs. It's like, where's that? Where's this production coming from? It's absolutely insane. Yeah, Harold Ramirez. Yeah, no, hold, definitely... hold all the rates, especially the pitching. Yeah, especially it, pitching. Oh my God, and what it is pitching is this year. You Ramirez have to, again, have one of those hold. guys I was talking about where it's like, uh, you know, he's a, he's actually playing a little over his head compared to what he did with 400 at bats last season. But he does have eight home runs mm. after 150 at bats, and he's batting eight, uh, yeah, 288. Okay. Doesn't really steal bases or anything, but he'll get you one or two bags. And that's where I think it's like, okay, you know, that's good. And you can own this guy and, and use him. But, he, again, platoon player, he's not always going to be available to you. And that's kind of what I'm dealing with right now with, like, some of my rookies. Like, we got, um, you know, Nick Prado, who's, like, the one guy on my team. I'm like, yeah, I, I can drop him at some point. But guys like, you know, mm -hmm. Nolan Jones and Moniac that I just picked up, mm -hmm. I mean, I want to hold on and see where this goes because of the small sample sizes. Right now, um, Moniac on the season, after a couple of weeks, you know, uh, being called up, 327. He's got four home runs on 49 at-bats, nine runs, seven RBIs, two stolen bags. And this is a former first overall pick, so this is somebody we could see get a little bit of development going. And then maybe, you know, in these other uh, more shallow leagues or, you know, leagues where they don't have keepers, you may be looking at this guy sometime in August. Yeah, no, Nolan Jones, of, of the ones that you're talking about, um, he's the one I like the most. That is, if, if any of the guys that you've picked up, it was funny because you picked him up immediately as I was looking at him. I'm not kidding. And I was, I was at the station, and I remember you snagged him. I'm like, damn it. And I was literally, I had him added. I was just trying to figure out who to drop, but I was 
I got. I was glad you got him because I think, uh, honest to goodness, I think with our trade where you were trading Josh Lau and you were telling me you're looking back on it now, I think Nolan Jones has the potential to make up for that power speed because he was tearing up AAA. And he's a, he was a big prospect with Cleveland. And now he goes into Colorado where it's just heating up. And speaking of heating up, another guy I already talked about is Ezekiel Tovar. He's gotten his strikeout rate under control. It's under 20%, which is considered good. I think it's closer to 18% right now. Uh, he was striking out at a very high rate early in the season. Power speed combo. Remember, guys, you were talking about prospects. This is the top prospect in Colorado. Don't ever forget that. Jose Siri, to piggyback off that just a little bit more, was a top prospect with Houston. With Houston. Houston, who brought up all these greats that love to bash trash cans and cheat. I mean, still, Jose Siri, great player considered by a great organization, trade him to Tampa. And that's what I'm saying. Don't forget about Ezekiel Tovar. Don't. We're a third to the season. Don't sour on guys just because they burned you earlier in the season. They, uh, Brian, De La, Brian De La Cruz, who's now bashing, was somebody I've dropped probably 100 times. But I ended up with him on my team. And that's why I want to be with uh, Ezekiel Tovar going forward. Yeah. And, um, you know, other players on my team right now that I'm, I have droppable are Marinaccio, who I keep picking up after he comes in and closes out these innings. And then when I start him, you know, get him in my relief section, he completely blows up. Uh, him and Prado, I'm not sure I, I know what to honestly do with. But I look around, you know, the you know my and this being a, a partial keeper league. I mean, look at Anthony Volpe for example, somebody that was mm -hmm. added very heavily at the beginning of the season, then dropped very heavily at, at uh, you know as we got into it. Then he was repicked back up very heavily, and now he's starting to drop off again. For a guy batting 194, 194 after 201 at bats, but with eight home runs and 13 mm -hmm. stolen bags. Would you say this is right. somebody you just leave on the waiver wire in shallow leagues? Um, or I'm sorry, in deeper leagues? or uh, No, shallow, but uh, or leave on the waiver wire. So it's like, yeah, 10-team league. I don't really need Volpe. Or is this somebody you think, like, uh, you know, maybe he could also be on the uprise for a playoff run? Yeah, I would just hold on to him. I mean, I just don't think there's any other short stops. I mean, you said the numbers yourselves. Just look at the eight home runs, 13 stolen bases. And mind you, he's struggling. So think of this guy, suddenly something clicks, mm -hmm. who knows, adjustment in the swing. It's again Yankee Stadium. Again, I keep pushing this. People need to understand, it's, we're going into this, this summer months, and this is when the ball's going to start flying. Eight home runs, and the guy isn't even clicking yet. So I would, I would, I would hold Volpe pretty much everywhere. I just don't believe there'd be anything on the waiver wire right now that's better than the potential of Volpe. Again, a top prospect, so I'd, I'd hold on to him. Nolan Jones, for uh, when I picked him up, I actually was just doing a little bit of reading about him earlier in the week, and he kind of seemed like somebody like maybe mm -hmm. like that for me was more of a let's see what happens and we'll do you know next year I'll I'll definitely be taking a hard look at him. But, you know, ever since... I, I, I think it's going to be this year, man. I, I really think Nolan Jones is going to end up breaking. I think he'll have kind of what, like, Cor Corbin Carroll has done is just come out freaking swinging. And he's already homered. Like, yeah. three games, this dude's already homered. Again, Colorado. <laughs> Do not forget that. This dude has prestigious power. Yeah, so I'm definitely going to be excited uh, to see where, see where that goes. And at this point, it's like a lot of the, the guys on my team... Um, are just you know speculative ads at the moment like we're did you see what jared schuster did yesterday yeah i mean he was pretty yeah, he, much he, flawless he's doing, with, he's, without the k's uh, but then you know at the very end lets up a couple of runs and they yanked him but you, you got away with a 5.1 right. innings pitch you get the win you get a k 3.38 era yep. 1.31 whip not great not terrible so it's just one of those things where it's like hey this guy 24 percent rostered up 11 percent from last week on the season now after um the limited amount of starts he's had 30.2 innings pitched he is two and two with the win loss record 21 strikeouts and the era at 4.99 whip at 1.34 so those numbers are starting to come down and he's next mm -hmm. his next outing um isn't going to be for a little while but this is somebody if you're struggling for pitching at the moment he's starting to put it together a little bit much like you know Kopech did mm -hmm. Kopech still letting up some runs but he, he's the K machine right now and um, yeah he's hitting batters and everything but you could do worse for what you're seeing on the waiver wire at the moment 
Yeah, and, and like we practiced patience before, and Kopech definitely might. I want to see a little more from Kopech. I, I hope he puts it together. I mean, this is a top prospect traded for Chris Sale, but another former top prospect. Again, a, a dude I just keep believing in. I've talked about him a thousand times. Alex Kirilov, who isn't really showing the numbers yet, but go look at his hard hit rate, and this dude is bashing balls, barreling up pretty much everything, as is Ball another bashing. top former prospect. Ball bashing. Uh, Spencer Torkelson, he's ball bashing. He's hitting the ball at uh, similar to that of Vladimir, uh, Vladdy Jr. So take a close look at Spencer Torkelson. Uh, that lineup is absolutely putrid at this point, especially with Riley Green out, looks like with a broken leg. But Alex Kirilov, Spencer Torkelson, something tells me top 50 players come into the season. Something's telling me both of those guys are about to break out and I think are potential keepers going forward um, and, and players that are going to be mainstays in both lineups um, for the foreseeable future. Excellent. All right, and um, I'm just kind of scouring our waiver wire here right now. You got any other guys you're, uh, mm -hmm. you want to talk about or anybody I should be looking for right now? Yeah, man, Pickens are slim right now. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. They they I'll tell you what. Um yeah, uh, one more guy I'll, I'll pretty much gloss over. Um Hay Sung Kim. Second, third and short, you know, that that um that depth quality is very very nice. He's finally starting to come together and is actually leading off for the Padres today, I noticed. Um they always said this dude was kind of a 15-15 kind of guy with the potential of a 300 average, which are absolute fantasy gold, especially in a stack lineup like the Padres. So I, uh, I strongly recommend go taking a look at him. He's another guy, still young, 27 years old, you know, came over with high pedigree. And, uh, you know, again, patience. Sometimes it takes a little while. Even last year, he was pretty good, just didn't hit for average. This year, it looks like he's starting to hit for average. Mm -hmm. So go take a look at Hayson Kim. What's interesting, we're, I'm going to talk about an older but, player uh, real, yeah. real quick. Um, but since you had brought up the Rockies, uh, I got to let everybody know. Charlie Blackman. Charlie Blackman. <laughs> I bet you just read my mind. I knew it. For, I for knew someone who's not <laughs> a real it, sexy yeah. name right now, he's batting 287 on the season in almost a couple hundred mm -hmm. at-bats. So that leads you to believe he's probably going to keep it up. He's uh, right now in some of these leagues that are one-day leagues uh, instead of, you know, uh, where you don't have to wait for the waiver to clear and uh, you could just add a pitcher that same day or something like that. In those leagues, you can directly add Blackman to your NA right now because he's on the bereavement list. So think about that because you could just kind of like stash him for a second, uh, leave him in NA slot, see how he does. If he keeps pushing going forward, he's not going to get you a ton of power right now, but it seems like he could end the season with 15 home runs, batting two, uh, 280. And um, that's not the worst thing in the world if you're like me and you're kind of stuck with some of these guys on the waiver wire, like Patrick Wisdom, who those home runs look great, but that average is fucking Mendoza abysmal. So, um, He's terrible. I, mean, no, like, I don't like Wisdom. You and me, I don't think we have a reason to pick up Charlie Blackman right now, but other people out there might. No. Sure, yeah, no, I, I, I like that. As It's actually a really good throw-in simply because um, you ever go back and look at fantasy, those older players, the Carlos Beltrans, the, the Lance Berkmans, the, anybody else I can think of, Jim Tomei, they always have like kind of a swan song fantasy season. Mm -hmm. uh, even like pool holes last year looked pretty good. Yeah, they, you know, don't don't ignore Charlie Blackman, but I feel like I absolutely agreed with you. Like I would not drop a Jose Siri right now, the potential of a Jose Siri for a Charlie Blackman. Like don't do anything too drastic, but definitely take a look at him. I mean, he's what, right field eligible, I want to say off the top of my head. And you know, it's going to start heating up, you know, Coors Field, so. Yeah. Anything's possible. Uh, n another guy who's kind of having issues with, um, you know, injuries and soreness and stuff right now, but is still having a good season is uh, former Tampa Ray, uh, Kevin Kiermeyer, now with Toronto, eligible at center, yeah. but only 8% home. But after 144 at bats on the season, batting 319 uh, with four home runs, five stolen bases. So mm -hmm. he's still got it a little bit here, too. Uh, any other notable uh, players at the moment? Yeah. Um, no, I, I think those are the guys I, I'm really, uh, really high on for must adds. A very super dark horse. You were talking about uh, your royal boy is uh, my royal boy, Michael Massey, who I once again added and dropped immediately. <laughs> but they, um, he was kind of a, a top prospect that flourished pretty quick, and the Royals rushed him up. 
Um, hitting 300, hits the ball very hard, does have a huge strikeout rate, and the Royals lineup really stinks, and that stadium's horrible for home runs. Um, hence why, like, I even think you and I were talking about Bobby Witt Jr. at the beginning of the year, and you had brought up how he's getting drafted before Austin Riley, which I just thought was not just being a fanboy of Austin Riley, being uh, looking at the lineup, looking at the stadium, going, why would anybody do that? And look at Bobby Witt. He's hitting, I think, like a yeah. 220 this year. Oh, God. It's, and, and, that, and it's and just like, dude, your you're going to pass was, on power for that? Like, yeah, I was on, just no about way. to mention when you, when you were saying that, because like, this has been an issue. With, with Bobby Witt, it's like, yeah, I know every once in a while you're getting your, your home run. Um, you know, he's not doing terrible there. He's got 10 on the season. You're getting lots of stolen bases. Okay, mm-hmm. great. You're getting runs. You're getting right. RBIs. But batting 228, so he's just, just siphoning all yeah. the life out of your uh, your exactly. av- average because he is batting all the time. And you know what the worst thing it, it is? Not that you would yeah. cut somebody like this. I'm just saying he's yep. he, you can't drop him in Yahoo right now, but you can drop Yandy Diaz. No. No. I mean, what sense does that make? I, I know. I, it's, that's preseason rankings. That's that's why, you know, another argument you and I have had, um, you know, with each other saying even we're preseason rankings. Uh, I don't, it, you know, let's just let's just do this. Let's just let's just go right into football. Speaking mm-hmm. of preseason rankings, uh, uh, a conversation that Ryan had just and I just recently had, this in like 30 minutes ago. Uh, we were talking about if I had the number one pick in the draft, I would take, drum roll please, Trevor Lawrence. I would take Trevor Lawrence number one because I do not feel that there is a safe number one pick, as we have stated in plenty of podcasts prior to this. You're talking about uh, uh, Jonathan Taylor at length. Us always saying, why is the number one pick always different? Us asking, why isn't Josh Allen, who is considered the number one fantasy player two seasons ago, not going number one, but you can get him in the third round? Yeah, and that's always uh, scary. I me, just think you know? in my heart of hearts, Trevor Lawrence is going to be the guy, man, and I, I want him. I want him everywhere I can. I do not want to chance him. Yeah, in fact, I mean, People may call me crazy if they hear this. I am actively attempting um, to get Trevor Lawrence in my keeper league, our keeper league, Rob the Toilet Bowl. I have Jalen Hurts, uh, picked mm-hmm. him up off the waiver wires when he was still backing up Wentz. We've talked about him at length on the podcast for years since mm-hmm. we started this podcast. And I am willing mm-hmm. to trade away Jalen Hurts and Keenan Allen to my buddy Steve to try and get just Trevor Lawrence off of him. Now, mind you, I do have Ridley on the team. I snagged him as soon as I saw he was re- uh, reinstated. And, yeah, I mean, that's my – besides the Jags defense, that's what I have to work with right now. So I love the idea of a Lawrence-Ridley tandem this year. I think it is a lock. But between the two of them, I think it's a lock for 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. So me, personally, yeah, uh, when uh, I'm, I'm in this I'm, draft – yeah. I'm looking at Ridley before some other wide receivers that have had success. I'm looking at Ridley before DJ Moore. I'm looking at Ridley before Michael Pittman Jr. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, here, here you go. You're talking about Calvin Ridley. Who is the receiver you couldn't pass on if both him and Ridley are sitting there where you're just like, oh, crap, I can't do Not Not Justin Jefferson. Let's go down the line and let's not fanboy it too hard. You know, let's not say Calvin Ridley is a first rounder. You know, mm-hmm. um, who's that receiver you would think twice on and go, I have to draft this guy over Ridley though. So this is assuming that Yahoo and ESPN are going to put the same value on Ridley that I believe he's going to deserve. No, this no, no. Year, but You're, as you just said, you, just okay. You. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so I'll, with with that being said, um, I'm I'm going to kind of take a guess at who would be around that area and I'd have to think in my head okay you're probably going to see Devontae Smith T Higgins um you, you know guys like that Terry McLaurin probably Chris Godwin DJ Moore those are going to be the kind of guys you see in in that uh mm-hmm. area now I think the one guy if T Higgins and Ridley were sitting there I'd have a really mm-hmm. fucking hard time passing up T Higgins I yeah. think I would skip like on Jamar guys Chase like Debo yep. Samuel that you know are going to be there. We, we called that show yeah. last year. Uh, Mike Evans with Baker yep. Mayfield. You know, I'm probably going to pass on Mike Evans. I'll take Ridley over Mike Evans. Oh, oh Garrett, for sure. Garrett Wilson, oh, for sure. I might think twice about 
but I but fuck Aaron Rodgers. Mm. So so like that, you know what yeah. I mean? You yeah. Know, so it's like yeah. I also yes, have I some do my personal and emotional decisions will go into it. And obviously, yes, I'm trying to to remove the fanboy, but I love the idea of what we think the Jaguars are going to do this year, what we think Trevor Lawrence is going to do this year. Um, you obviously were very correct about Etn being a fucking powerhouse with his old teammate once he got settled in. And I mean, look at the team mm. right now. I mean, he's going to be passing to right. Etn as well. So I think you know Trevor and and Ridley mm-hmm. are just going to be probably the best value uh, you're going to get as a QB wide receiver tandem this year. Would you go? Would you go out of your way to draft this draft? All right, here we go. First pick, and let's just say you get pick like 10, 11, 12, somewhere in that realm, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Would you go ETN first round, Trevor Lawrence second round, Calvin Ridley third round? Would you do that? If, if See, we're saying what we're saying yes. and saying that this is going to be a top offense in all of football, yes. would you not want all three of those freaking dudes? On? Yeah, 100%. That, I would totally do I that. I would do that because I would to me, totally yeah. freaking do that. In those situations, for that me would, at least, dude, that would be huge. And, and I like the idea because, again, in, in those situations, what, wow. you're, what you're really talking about is, I believe this team is going to be not only very good and have a good schedule and get deep and get into the playoffs, but then on the fantasy side of it, it's like, okay, th- if they are a good team, those three guys will produce much more often than they flop. We were talking yes. about potentially dude. seeing a 13 and four. Uh, Jaguars uh, Mm -hmm. record this season and if that's the case Mm -hmm. let's say those three guys for the sake of argument flop during four games and we know how it works you can lose a game Mm -hmm. without you know you can lose a game without uh, playing bad in in fantasy you could you know maybe you lost by seven points maybe 45 to 38 or something like that you know what I mean so I'm just speculating here, mm-hmm. but for me, that's a very that's very sexy, Rob. I'm, now now you got me thinking because we always talked about this, like with. See, I, want I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think you're giving me a long winded. I think you're giving me a long winded answer to say simply this: We yes. preach on this podcast best value. Mm-hmm. Etnt Law Ridley, we're saying top offense. If you put that in your head on a fantasy landscape, yes, it's freaking huge, and you know. Some dildo is going to write a fantasy thing, don't draft ETN, they got Tank Bigsby and, who, you know, and whoever else we have on. I know we picked Dean Ernest Johnson or whatever. Dude, <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on. Like, yeah, get over Michael it. Michael Hastings. Get over yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Real quick, what was, what was the article you said about B. John Johnson? Who are we supposed to be drafting now, according to this freaking dildo with uh, legs? Yeah, so that ranking system was absolutely abysmal. Bring that up. It was Christian McCaffrey, oh Jonathan Taylor, Bijan Robinson, Austin Eckler, uh, Saquon Barkley. That was their top five. So they're saying Bijan Robinson, take him the third running back in the draft. Now, I don't even know why Dude, ETN's not in that, that conversation in the first place. needs to lose his job. So, I to know, because he's a Jaguar, dude. Yeah, and that's why I love I love what you just brought up. This is going to be a great fucking strategy because, to me, I was talking to you about this. It's like... I'm, I'm probably going to wait to let Lawrence fall to me. I'm not interested in Mahomes or Hurts or anybody like that this year in a redraft. I really want to go with this strategy. I think it's going to work. And I like what you're saying because I didn't want JT number one last year. And what did I say about right. Josh Jacobs on this podcast? I, I said it, and I was like, in all the mock drafts I'm doing, he is falling everywhere to, like, the fourth round. That's mm. fucking insane. Right. And if nobody on this who listens to this uh, shit podcast knows this, I got to tell you, the number one running back in football last year for fantasy purposes was Josh fucking Jacobs. He dusted everyone. So everybody that was taking your JT number one overall, and there's nothing wrong with taking Austin Eckler. I'm just just saying this to prove a point. Austin Eckler at six or eight or wherever he may have fallen. And that's great, right? But then on the flip side of it, a guy from the fourth round outscores all of them. So if we're to believe that the Jaguars really are going to do this, and we believe in the talent of ETN and Ridley and Trevor Lawrence, I'm saying this is probably the perfect draft strategy. You get ETN for your RB1. 
you lock in yep. your QB in case anybody else is getting fucking cute. Yep. And because we think that Ridley's worth way more than other people are going to think, I guess he does fall to the third round. He would. And that's it, super it, fucking value. Still on the board. Catch game last On night. the board will easily still be. Who was watching game last night? Say <laughs> We do it all the time. Uh, we do it all the time. Um, yeah. I would. Uh, I'm a 100% advocate on that. And when we were just chatting, it just popped in my head. I was like, wait, that's totally realistic. And though it looks like reaches, I think, come into the season. Top five at every position. I think ETN, T Law, and Ridley will be top five at every position come fantasy. And again, to what you were talking about about the podcast, you know, we were talking about Trevor Lawrence. I was like, top eight quarterback, this is like the year in the stride, and this year I just think he's just absolutely gonna take off. And you want a piece of the uh, you want, I, I think let's let's go full circle, baseball, football. I think the Jaguars are going to be that sexy Rays team that comes in and everybody suddenly is taking notice. Mind you, you know the Rays game-to-game uh, -game audience has now finally peaked. It's like the best it's ever been. And it's like cool to see. And I, I think, you know, go look at the Florida Panthers. You know, think of how ironic all of this is kind of shaking out right now. Uh, look at the Florida Panthers, aren't they? In, I think they're in the Stanley Cup. We're going to look we're looking at the Rays as the best team in baseball, if not the second best team, whoever you want to consider. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and now we're sitting here looking at a very, very sexy Jaguars team. And yeah, that's I cool. Think we said it, I and, think we said uh, it sometime last year. Yeah. We were starting to witness the Jaguars doing what the Bengals had done. And I really think right. that this is going to yep. be probably one of the best Monday night football games we've ever seen coming up this year. Burrow versus Lawrence 2. A lot of people, do you, do you remember yep. that? Everybody remember that six touchdown game? Yeah. Burrow uh, had Did or whatever. Did you last night? You know, what, what was that, like 600 yards or something in that game? I can't remember. He, he did something crazy. Something and like that, winds yeah. up trumping uh, Trevor Lawrence. So this is going to be, uh, you know, this is going to be that, that kind payback of a, game. Kind of a know revenge know I mean? game. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. Go... Go get ETNT, Law, and Ridley. That's my. Uh, I like it. That's, that's my it. advice to everybody in fantasy this year. That's my number one, number two, number three pick, and I think I, I shore up. I think that sits on a weekly basis. I wouldn't be shocked to say twenty points per at least. Like that's not not, not at least. Excuse me. I'll say the average. No, I I'll love, bet you I love you're, this you're averaging. I, I absolutely about do. sixty I, points between the three of them. Obviously, now with Zay Jones and Christian Kirk and Ingram, I think they're going to lose a little bit of fantasy value this year. But the Jaguars are going to be a fucking machine. Yeah. Um, I think that really yeah. and at ETN are that offense be is staying targets. on the field. Uh, and Ingram's going to yep. be serviceable top ten. Christian Kirk's probably going to be in that top twenty-five. Zay Jones, I'd say he he's probably going to take on that Keelan Cole role where he's not on the field too much. But we'll see what happens. Uh, obviously, this is barring. This is spitballing and just barring any negative talk of possible injuries. But I love the, the strategy. We talked a lot about our strategy last year, and, and we implemented it. And I had success, uh, multiple first place trophies. So I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm 100% on, 100 on board with what Rob is saying here. For our draft strategy this year, I'm loving this idea. We're going to try to do ETN number one. In the second round, we'll grab Trevor Lawrence and lock him down and kind of shake up the draft for everybody. Third round, we take Ridley. Uh, the only thing I'd be worried about is that fourth round, trying to find another Josh Jacobs. We'll talk about that more when the season gets closer. Once again, so this was Fantasy R&R &R with Robin Ryan. We'll see you next time.